right? right uh, quick point of privilege. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Quick point of privilege once again. Quick point of privilege once again. Hi, James Jackson, Sacramento DSA, he, him. I have already asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload. And that goes double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also triggering to my anxiety. Like, the be comradely doesn't ju isn't just for like, you know, let's keep things civil or whatever. It's so that people aren't going to get triggered and so that it doesn't affect their performance as a delegate, okay? Your need to express yourself is important, but your need to express yourself should not trump or over... Like, I see that no one's clapping for me. It could be because I'm not engaging, but it also is because everyone's doing this. And that's really important because those loud bursts of noise, even though this is a noisy space, when we can do something like reducing that, that's really important. So please don't clap, shoot up these. We have a lot of disabled comrades and uh, a lot of those are invisible disabilities. You don't know who it is uh, that is having a more difficult time navigating this space. And this space was not created with all of their needs in mind. So it's up to us to modify that space to make sure that uh, everybody is able to move in the ways that they need to move. Um, and, and additionally, with the, um, the noise issue, like avoid hissing, avoid waving banners, right? Um, because those, there's, there's all sorts of things. If you don't know what to do, show up these, right? I'm sure there's lots of ways that we can communicate to each other without needing to rely on something uh, that's going to hurt somebody else. We have quiet rooms that are available. There's a range of options of these, right? Please don't go in that space with anything that's like an aggressive scent, for instance, right? Because we don't want to put people in stressful situations that they don't consent to, right? And we, there are um, right-wing infiltrators who are trying to get in here, but it's going to be really traumatic for people if we're not making an affirmative es effort to de-escalate each other and de-escalate ourselves, right? Take a deep breath. And feel better before you say anything. Don't really talk to anybody who doesn't have a credential, especially if you claim to be from the press. You have no idea who that person is. Please do not talk to anybody who identifies themselves as a member of the press without having uh, credentials. Um, don't talk to cops. Don't talk to MAGA assholes. Oh, we're almost there. Just uh, this, but thank you. Um, we are going to be visited tomorrow um, by some MAGA protesters. Um, is there anybody here who's done abortion clinic escort work? By all means, don't talk to cops if there are cops there for any reason at all, right? Um, and if you do see someone talking to cops, uh, let the marshals know. Um, we, are, we are safe and we are strong because there's power in collective, uh, in collective work. What do you make of this? I, I, the Democratic Socialists of America seem like they've been taken over by a bunch of Trustafarians from Brooklyn. Is that, do you think what's happened? Yeah, I think it's actually, sometimes you see mass movements that actually dwindle into niche markets. Um, it happens a lot. Uh, Broadway, for example, used to be the mainstream of American popular culture and then became a little boutique thing. Same thing happened with jazz. And these guys have gone the same way. And in fact, they're using the same choreography, those jazz hands. Uh, I don't understand why clapping, you've been talking about real problems with men in America, we're now watching a political convention where clapping is so triggering, uh, everybody in says had to make jazz hands, like a lot of camp assistant choreographers uh, rehearsing some number from Hello, Dolly. I don't like the jazz. I find jazz hands triggering because it reminds me of old-time mammy singers. So it's like being at a convention of uh, the Virginia Democrat governor and lieutenant governor and all the rest of them all doing, all doing their uh, mammy songs. Uh, this, this is the degeneration. Socialism slaughtered millions. These trust Trustafarians couldn't slaughter anybody. They're not serious socialists. <laughs> We've really missed you. And yet, as Angela Nagel said, and I think it's a fair point, and that's why this is worth taking a look at, they do have an effect on the mainstream of the Democratic Party. I mean, they're using language that, unfortunately, Elizabeth Warren uses, or Batoa Rourke, or that Booker kid from New Jersey is running for president. I mean, they, they seem to be cribbing their notes from the DSA. 
Yeah, I think that's what Angela got wrong. I mean, no one's interested in, uh, you know, the controlling heights of the economy. This nonsense is actually yeah. what they're about. And if you listen to the Democrat debate, which I watched from thousands of miles away, so it seemed even weirder, Cory Booker at one point said, we don't talk enough about trans-Americans, and in particular, we don't talk enough about African-American trans... I want to make sure I get this right. African-American trans-Americans. And, of course, the answer to that is that on these terms, you can never talk enough about African-American trans-Americans. Uh, this uh, this uh, obsession with boutique demographics, which they take as seriously, it's basically like Downton Abbey for progressives. It's does the second son of the Viscount uh, get to sit next to the younger daughter of the Marquis? That is actually this, this, oh, well, I am a white woman of privilege, so I have to sit down at the far end of the table because an African-American, trans-American, non-binary person gets to sit at the head of the table. They take it all seriously. The presidential candidates take it seriously. It's an alternative reality that they've successfully created. And it's boring as hell. If only they would mm. spend four minutes telling us what they think of the Federal Reserve Bank, I'd be kind of excited. Mark Spine, they, I am They've never heard back. of the Federal so Reserve. <laughs> Great to be back with you, Jacka. What does that have to do with trans-Americans? So mm. good. Thank you. Good to see you.